Over the past week or so, I've gotten a ton of comments from you guys asking about the wide receivers to target and avoid video that I did from last year. Well, here it is. Today, we are going to look at what makes a stud wide receiver based on stud wide receivers since 2015 in fantasy and how this class stacks up based on those benchmarks, based on the data and the findings that we look for. So this won't be the be all end all. These are not my wide receiver rankings once you skip to the end of the video but it did post a decent success rate last year at predicting the hits, predicting some of the misses as well. If you guys want my full rookie rankings, my full dynasty rankings, you know how to get them. Flockfantasy.com using the promo code FSE. You'll get 30% off a two-day free trial, access to all of my rankings, dynasty, rookie, uh, bonus articles, bonus content, all the data that you see in this video today will be posted over there. So definitely check that out if you're interested in some bonus content. Like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video. If you got any value from it, I seriously encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new around here. But let's get right into it. So before I get into the video, just a reminder that there is timestamps along the scroll bar in the description. So if you don't care about the process, how we get to the point of the wide receivers to target and avoid from this year's class, by all means, just skip ahead. But I do encourage you to watch the full video. I'm going to go a little faster than last year because I did explain the entire process and everything going into it last year. So if you want a more in-depth explanation of the process, you can also check out the first part of last year's video. Basically what I did was I outlined a bunch of analytics thresholds, a bunch of numbers thresholds that are based on wide receiver finishers from 2015 to 2022. So eight seasons of data who scored at least 15 plus PPR points per game with at least 10 to 12 games played on a 16 game season. Sometimes this meant that they were wide receiver ones because they scored 20 points per game. Maybe they were low end wide receiver ones or high end wide receiver twos with barely 15 points per game. Either way, these were all guys that were very productive for your fantasy team those years. And we're going to test among these wide receivers, which were the most common traits that they had. How many of them were tall? How many of them were fast? How many of them, you know, were good producers in college, all that kind of stuff. And we are going to use these metrics to test the current crop of rookies to determine who has the most upside, who checks the most boxes and who doesn't check any boxes or is missing a lot of stuff. This exercise should probably help you guys create a roadmap for two things. Number one, identifying potential sleeper wide receivers that maybe went on day three of the draft that look like they have pretty good profiles. And number two, probably identifying some busts up at the top of rookie drafts. I don't think this is going to tell you who's a great wide receiver or not. I think it's just best for using this to identify sleepers and also to avoid the potential busts at the top. If player X, wide receiver X checks eight boxes out of the 10 and wire, uh, wide receiver Y checks three boxes out of the 10, we should probably feel more comfortable betting on player X, wide receiver X. So this is what we're dealing with here. Like I said, here are all the wide receivers from 2015 to 2022 who scored at least 15 plus PPR points per game. There was 56 different wide receivers across those eight seasons. Last year's video, I talked about 10 benchmarks that we were going to test. This year, I tried adding more. I actually did in the running back video yesterday. I added three more that ended up being predictive. But these 10 that I, uh, you know, I tested more, but these 10 that I used last year actually did remain the most predictive. And you guys can see the benchmarks that I test here on the screen, how you can hit that, how you can miss, and how you can exceed it. For example, 40 time under a 460. If you ran slower than that, then you missed that mark. If you ran between 445 and 459, then you hit that mark. And if you ran faster than a 445, so you had a really high 40 time, then you exceeded that benchmark, so on and so forth. Yards per team pass attempt above 2.25. If you missed that, you had a yards per team pass attempt in your best season below 2.25. If you hit it, it was 2.26 to 2.74. If you exceeded it, it was 2.75 plus. So you guys can see all the metrics, how to miss, how to hit, how to exceed. I tinkered with... Other things, like I said, reception perception scores, I didn't really have the historical data for. PFF receiving grades, they weren't as predictive as I thought they were going to be. And some other things as well, but these ended up being the best ones. Here is how the percentages shook out for the common traits of those 56 wide receivers. So of those guys who finished as 15 plus PPR points per game scores, this was the percentage that each of those guys shared. You can see 91.07% of them ran a 40 time faster than 460. Best season yards per team pass attempt, 83.93% of them were better than 2.25 in their best college season. When you look at all these metrics, again, just the percentages are the thing that we want to take away. The 40 time wasn't really predictive. Outside of not being slow at 460, 
it didn't really matter if he ran fast or not. 37.5% of the wide receivers in that 56 ran 4.45 or faster, which I would consider a fast 40 time. But at wide receiver, that doesn't really matter as much. Only 37.5% of these guys ran fast, quote unquote. So guys that run in the mid, the mid four fives or whatever, we shouldn't really be too, too concerned with that from an NFL draft scouting perspective. No surprise to anybody that all of the production-based metrics, if you guys have been following this channel, are the most predictive and are the most important. Yards per team pass attempt, target share, and dominator rating were the next three behind that first disqualifier of not being slower than 4.6. Top three round draft capital was next. Obviously, we want our wide receivers to be able to get on the field. Then came size. Small wide receivers in this class have some hope, knowing that there's been 13 sub 190 pound wide receivers to finish with 15 plus PPR points per game. So it's not hopeless for Jordan Addison and Zay Flowers and you know Josh Downs and these guys that are sub 190 pounds. And as I often say, it looks like early declare status be damned. You know, age related metrics be damned. I definitely think it still matters, and it was still predictive to some degree, 62 percent to 71 percent for all those age related metrics. Um, respectively, but it's definitely less important than people think in the wide receiver evaluation landscape because people are immediate to doom, you know, Chris Olave last year for being a late declare. But when you realize that was really his only mark on his profile, then it, I, like I said, it becomes a little bit overrated. So, so that was the single time finishers. I also wanted to test if this data changed at all. If we looked at guys that finished as 15 plus PPR point per game scores more than once from 2015 to 2022, because in a dynasty draft, that's really what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the guy that can be a multi-time wide receiver one, a multi-time wide receiver two or better. We're not looking for a one-off production and then he falls off a cliff. And as you guys can see, 37 of those 56 wide receivers in the first data set did it multiple times. And this is how the numbers changed. On the left column, you guys can see that the single time finishers, the multi-time finishers, and then the differences between those two percentages. The biggest swing was yards per team pass attempts, proving to be a significant indicator of success. 94.59% of these wide receivers that finished as multi-time wide receiver ones cleared 2.25 yards per team pass attempt in their best collegiate season, which is a extremely, extremely common mark for these guys. Production mattered even more, and it looks like early declares mattered a little bit more as well. So if you guys are unaware, it looks like a yards per team pass attempt looks to be one of the more predictive metrics. And again, it's a little bit more of a disqualifier, 2.25, about half the receivers in this class that got drafted, uh, you know, hit that mark more or less, but it definitely is looking to be something that was significant in these uh, draft classes. So also in case you were curious, because I did do this video last year, um, if you haven't gone back and looked at it, this is basically how it shook out. This is how these guys graded out last year. And of course, there was film and other context needed to get to my final rankings. But I think it is interesting to note that this exercise was really one of the big eye-opening things for me on Chris Olave and Christian Watson, because realistically, the only two things wrong with those guys' profiles were the fact that they weren't early declares and you know a little bit older of prospects, but they both produced pretty well relative to their offensive success. And uh, also it helped outline Wandell Robinson as a pretty solid value. And I think people who spent, you know, late second round, early third round picks on him are probably happy that they did that. But unfortunately, you know, nobody bets a thousand. And it also co served as confirmation bias to me to stay high on Sky Moore and have him as like my 108 in rookie drafts, stay high on David Bell and draft him at the one, two turn in most of my rookie drafts. So we're still just one year removed from these guys' careers and they could definitely turn it around. But pretty decent results overall, minus those two misses that I definitely took the brunt of. And I'm sure a lot of you guys did if you drafted them as well. So if you skipped ahead to this part, this is basically where we take the process. We take everything that we've outlined in the first you know, 10 minutes of this video. And we look at how the current crop of wide receivers stacked up. And as you guys can see, there's a lot of red on day three because this class was not very good outside of the top names. But there is a lot to like about this situation here. The point value that you guys can see at the end of the column, you can see that JSN had 14 points. Jordan Addison had 13 points going down to the bottom. You know, Darius Davis had like minus 15 points. Those point values basically represent a score where if you exceeded a threshold, which I outlined how you can exceed those earlier in the video, that was worth three points. One point for meeting a threshold, hitting the mark on that, and then minus two for missing a threshold. I wanted to make sure that the exceeds outweighed the misses because I think when someone's really good in one area, it should kind of factor in to how they can win at the next level. And as expected in this model, basically, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jordan Addison, and Quentin Johnson are at the top of this year's class. I would say the model would probably be flawed if they weren't because they were clearly, you know, 
among the best wide receiver prospects in this class. But I also want to point out that Josh Downs is right there with them. He also had a score above 10, and he's absolutely one of my favorite values in all of rookie drafts right now because not a lot of guys scored over 10 last year. Only three or four guys did. Cedric Tillman also looks to be a solid value as well, posting one of the top six scores in this rookie class as well. Uh, he may have been considered a great prospect had he come out last year, but of course, going back to school, getting injured is going to hurt your prospect profile a little bit. And he's definitely a guy that I've drafted a few times so far in rookie drafts, especially sometimes when he falls to round three of rookie drafts because he's caught behind Cooper and DPJ and Elijah Moore on the Browns depth chart there. But third round draft capital for a decent prospect, definitely in on that. It looks like Trey Palmer, who was drafted in the sixth round of the Buccaneers, and Andre uh, Iasovis, I can't pronounce his name, but he went uh, from Princeton in the sixth round also to the Cincinnati Bengals. These guys look to be great sleeper options. According to this model, they scored pretty well in a lot of the production-based things and also were you know big and good athleticism as well. Jalen Hyatt, Marvin Mims, Zay Flowers, Jaden Reed. I mean, nothing really to take away from these guys. They kind of just look like solid picks where they're going. I don't think, I don't really buy into the fact that they were like lower than Trey Palmer and Andre uh, uh, eyes, you know, profiles because they got better draft capital than those guys. So for me, I would bump those guys up from like a pure ranking standpoint. I also wanted to draw your attention to a guy like Rasheed Rice because I've talked a lot of shit about Rasheed Rice since the draft happened because I didn't think he was a very good prospect, even though he went second round to the, uh, to the Kansas City Chiefs. I haven't really drafted him much in a lot of my rookie drafts. I drafted him one time so far in the six rookie drafts that I've done at the 212. And the only reason I drafted him there is A, because I wanted to differentiate a little bit in case I'm wrong about him. And B, he's almost never there at 212. A lot of people are taking him in the 204 to 207 type of range. So Rasheed Rice, I think it definitely is encouraging for him that he scored well, knowing that the three production metrics, he pretty much hit the mark on. He hits the mark on size. He ran a fast enough 40. And of course, going to Kansas City won't hurt your profile. But my concerns with him were strictly film related. I didn't think he was very good on film. So I still don't really think he's that good of a receiver, but it's definitely encouraging to see these benchmarks. And again, Christian Watson was a guy whose eyes I was open to, who was also a second round pick to a good offense. So it's possible I may be wrong on Rasheed Rice, but I think uh, the film kind of, you know, scared me off of him quite a bit. Kayshawn Boutte, Xavier Hutchinson, and Tank Dell, uh, also decent third round dart throws. If you guys are in rookie drafts, those are going to be big time targets of mine based on what how they scored on this and also some of the film that they put out there as well. Of the guys that scored negatively, um, there was a lot of bad receivers in this class, so I, I don't want to spend any time on those guys. I'm pretty sure you guys know not to draft them, and they're probably just like priority free agent pickups. But Jonathan Mingo did rank among those guys, and he was a second round pick, and he's going, you know, sometimes in the late first, early second of rookie drafts right now. He scores well in size. He scores well in 40 time. He scores well in draft capital, but he pretty much missed the mark on everything else, right? He was not good production wise, not good from an age perspective as a late declare and that kind of thing. I've drafted Mingo also just one time. And I would say generally you should avoid him in rookie drafts where he's currently going. I got him at the 211. So I was like, hey, you know what? This is kind of worth the risk at this point because I do think he has a high ceiling, but 99% of the time, he's not going to be on the board at the 211. He's probably going to go 202 to 204 in most of your drafts. And I did have one draft where he went at the 112 as well. So um, definitely a guy that, you know, RAS score and draft capital and size can only carry you so much. So those are my big takeaways from the class. A lot of you guys mentioned, and I thought it was an excellent point, last year incorporating the percentages into the final score. So basically what you said is like, okay, if you know that this metric is more predictive than that metric, why didn't you do a weighted average of these scores so that the you know players that ranked highly in the metrics that mattered more would you know then boost up the the uh, up the charts and I think that was an excellent point so that's exactly what I did uh, I created a weighted average version of last year's model that I talked about and I think using a weighted average makes it so that the more predictive stuff gets weighted heavier and Jackson Smith and Jigba Jordan Addison and QJ obviously still had the class Josh Downs right behind them same as the the previous example without the weighted average Trey Palmer moved up even more. Um, Cedric Tillman also moves up even more. Zay Flowers moved up a little more in that in that uh, in that exercise as well. Of course, Hyatt, Mims, you know, Rasheed Rice, Jaden Reed. These guys are you know decent second round picks, early third round picks if they fall. And again, it looks like the model does not like Jonathan Mingo, and it does not like Michael Wilson, who obviously were both day two picks to the Carolina Panthers and Arizona Cardinals respectively. Trey Palmer is probably one of my bigger takeaways here. Same with Cedric Tillman and Josh Downs. Those guys are the real you know, targets for me in rookie drafts. And the big time avoids for me, obviously, are more so uh, Jonathan Mingo, Michael Wilson. And I think, you know, Tank Dell not scoring very well, despite being a 
a third round pick going to an offense that has very little pass catching competition. Those guys are probably not the guys that I'm going to be targeting. And Trey Palmer, I will talk about in the, the sleeper video that I do every year. I'm going to be dropping that on Monday, my top five sleepers in rookie drafts, guys that you can get with third and fourth round rookie picks. So hopefully you guys got some value from this. If you did, Go down, hit the like button. It takes two seconds and it really helps us out. We really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button too if you enjoyed the content that you heard here. If you feel like you got a lot of value for you know not a lot of your time, I, I kept this video you know 17 minutes or so. So definitely hit the subscribe button. We got tons of other rookie draft content. All week we've been dropping like two videos a day. So definitely go check out our rankings. Go check out you know the mistakes to avoid in rookie drafts. All that stuff is posted on the channel. And like I said, if you like what you saw today and you want to get access to this data, you can go to flockfantasy.com and use the promo code FSE when you sign up. And that'll get you access to all my databases, all my grades, all my rookie rankings, all my dynasty rankings, all the exclusive articles that myself, Danny, and all the other Flock Fantasy contributors are putting out there. And you'll also get all their rankings as well from Mason, from Zach and Badake, from Chris and Pierre over there on Flock Fantasy. We've teamed up to create a great product, we believe, for you guys. And you wouldn't believe the type of stuff we have in the hopper right now in the next coming months as we approach the actual fantasy season. That site is going to be popping. I promise you it's not just what you see is what you get. We are constantly adding to this thing, constantly trying to make it better for you guys. So definitely check that out if you're interested. If you want to get some values in rookie drafts right now as well, head on over to Underdog Fantasy. Use the promo code FSE. And uh, you'll get 100% back on whatever you put in. So if you put in 100 bucks, that's four Best Ball Mania 4 entries, four shots at $3 million to first, $15 million in total prizes. If you use our promo code when you deposit that $100, you have four additional free Best Ball Mania 4 entries to use, 100% back on whatever you put in. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But with that being said, peace out, and I'll talk to you soon.